Hello, this is Dr. Todd. Welcome back to Thinking Christianly. Today's question deals with self-awareness. We're going to answer, how is self-awareness helpful in the Christian walk? I think that's a good question. It deserves a reasonable answer. And I think we see it implied in Scripture when we look at passages like 1 Timothy 4, where Paul is giving instructions to Timothy on how to minister to those in his congregation. And Paul, Paul says this. Let me read this to you. He tells young Timothy, he says, Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. What we learn from that passage is that we have to pay attention to ourselves, to our teaching, to how we think, to how we behave ourselves. And self-awareness is a vital component to that. The, the Bible also says in Proverbs 20, verse 5, the plans in a man's heart are like deep water, but a man of understanding draws them out. And what we have to understand is, is we have to, to spend time reflecting on internal experiences we have so that we understand what those deep waters in our hearts are. Because if you don't understand your own heart, you won't be able to grow. You'll continually do things that are detrimental to your growth. So how do we do that? Well, first, we pay particular attention to negative emotional experiences. Emotions are windows into our soul and they teach us that something is that's very important to us is either right or wrong. For instance, if you're extremely sad or angry, there's something deeper in your heart going on and it's trying to let you know. It's like a dashboard light on an automobile. If the check engine soon light comes on and you ignore it, eventually the car will stall because something very vital something vital is going wrong with the system. And so, first of all, we have to understand our, uh, we have to acknowledge unpleasant or extreme emotional reactions we have to certain triggers in our environment. Second, we need to be honest with ourselves and admit desires and feelings and cravings that we may or may not have. If you look at the Psalms, they're filled with, with, with the psalmist coming to God and just being just being barren and honest and transparent and vulnerable. And God desires to hear these things. So, so we've, the first thing we need to do is we need to become aware or we need to acknowledge difficult emotions we're experiencing. The second thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we uh, admit, uh, after we look under the hood, we need to admit desires and motives and cravings that we either have or we should have or we don't have. And then third, we are to submit those to the Lord and ask Him to help us with those. Ask Him to give us the grace we need to forgive someone else, for instance, or, or whatever it may be. And then the fourth thing we need to do is we need to be able to behave in such a way that glorifies God. And it all starts with watching ourselves. As Paul said, I'll read it again. As Paul said, pay close attention to yourself. It all begins with an intense emotional experience in response to a trigger in our environment or to a circumstance. If you'll do that, you'll become more self-aware. And as you become more self-aware, you can actually take corrective steps, not only to glorify God, but to draw yourself closer and closer into communion with Jesus Christ. Now, I hope this has been helpful. If you enjoy these videos, please uh, click the like button and subscribe below. I hope to bring you a, a video every week talking about different things from the Christian worldview perspective. God bless. We'll talk again soon.